Right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started kind of officially here. Um, I just started my recording, so we talked a little bit, but we haven't started yet. So uh, we've got a few people uh, here live, uh, but uh, like I said, I'm going to try and post these videos. Um, so that we can watch them um, offline as well. Um, so these, these sessions, I mean, you know, this is a this is a, a an online course uh, that they're trying to hold these sessions. Uh, these will be kind of uh, a combination of office hours. So you know, if you want to uh, contact me and you're in this class, you can always do it um, for this time period to 30 time slot. Um, if you want to do that face to face, you can. Uh, so uh, right now I'm doing this in my lab in the science building, size 355. Or you can use Zoom. That's fine. So. Um, so I have two of the three students uh, say that they didn't have their dead box up, uh, but, but uh, I don't know if my third student here. Uh, so, uh, so I, I don't know, I mean, you know, in, in the absence of questions, um, let me see, where's my, I was thinking about just saying one or two things about getting this uh, dead box set up here. So for anybody that might not have it up yet, you don't need to get that up. So the first assignment is due by Friday this week. The first final assignment is also a practice assignment that uh, before 10, I want to try and, and kind of work on that, although there's a video showing how to do that. Because, but I do, everybody should try and get up um, so they, they can work on that practice assignment like today and tomorrow and start working on the actual assignment here um, you know, uh, in the next day or two. So, um, so So, so, you know, back to our, our class, there was a couple of reminders and things up there already. Uh, so I'm going to be going through the getting started content. Okay, so if you click on the content on our course, uh, back to the getting started, uh, tell us about the things you need to do. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, yeah, the, the first things are kind of about uh, the class and the things that we're doing this week in the textbook. Uh, but the actual instructions for getting the dev box set up is in this repository on GitHub. So, so let me just go to this a little bit. So basically, uh, you need to get the structures of software installed. So the, the two people who are here right now seem to have gotten past this point. Right? So real quickly, um, um, we need these two pieces of software to uh, run yet in order to check out uh, the, the, the repository that has the virtual box set up for you. Um, and then to, uh, that virtual box and vagrant are actual virtualization tools for running this virtual box, right? So uh, most of these are standard installers for, for people that might be watching this after the fact. Um, by the way, I mean, I did some videos on these as well. So, uh, so yeah, you know, you can watch the same things I'm talking about by, by going through those videos uh, on YouTube. When I say up the windows or Mac OS, so. Um, so yeah, for, for most of these, I mean, yeah, it depends on how much, how much uh, experience you have with promoting and installing that kind of system. So, so all three of these are standard installers for those to install that on Windows or Mac. Uh, it might not be as smooth with doing stuff on the command line, uh, right? So um, let me show you those. So, um, I've actually already got these. Oh, no, I'm not, not going to go and try it. Mean, you know, on Windows, you just double click on these. Firstly, you just answer, accept all the defaults that it comes up with, and let it install where it wants to. 
and set up your environment variables and things like that. Uh, to, to check these things, so like on Windows, um, we just wait, bring up the command prompt. So if you just bring your start menu and type back uh, like command, you'll find the command prompt. I usually pin that to my start menu, right? So I usually right click on that and um, pin it to my. Um, uh, Mac and Mac and the taskbar. How do you like to find those, right? Uh, on Mac, it's slightly different. So on Macintosh, you have to uh, go to your applications. I think it's something like application system or something like that. And uh, you can go to your Mac. So um, it's on the you find that it's on that, that, that you go to your finder and you go to. I'm going to have applications, but I'm going applications on like system or something like that. Or utilities, it's not going to be like utilities. All right. So, anyway, um, but yeah, I've got, I've got uh, some things on that to try and find out as well. So, um, so you should, uh, before you move on to trying to do the clone repository thing to figure out, you should make sure that these are all working from the command line. So on a Windows system, uh, you can use, for example, the where command. I think I've already got this so What you should see is, you know, if it's installed on the path, to be aware, uh, you'll see the full path to the executable where it's installed for the command line tool. Right? For Linux or Mac, it's rich instead of rare, like that. Um, so rich get instead. Now, but, you know, that's not actually running the tool. If it's on your path, you shouldn't be able to actually run it. So, for example, uh, if I've got get successfully solved on my path, I can run get and ask it to do things, like tell me what the it is. Right? So, so you should not run things. Uh, uh, so when you do virtual box, virtual box is really you have to run from the command line. So uh, um, you can do a watch to see after it's not virtual box that it got installed correctly if you're bad. On Windows, it doesn't quite work because the installer on Windows um, doesn't uh, put the, the command line tool on your path for some reason. I'm not, I'm not completely certain why it doesn't do that. But uh, yeah, if you want to actually check the version of the uh, box of the command line, you have to type it in the third name to an executable. So I just copy and paste this, including the quote marks. So I usually, usually just do that and do a control C. You can do control B in the terminal to um, do that. But, but you should be able to run that and find out your version of the virtual box. Um, and for me, like I said, uh, if you're on a Windows machine, don't skip these steps about uh, making certain that your virtualization is enabled um, on your PC BIOS. Uh, so you have like a 50 50 chance that it might be, might or might not be enabled by default if you have a, a Windows machine, Windows hardware. Uh, that hardware, as far as I know, um, is always enabled. Uh, so you don't really have to, to, to check the step. Um, but, but yeah, if you've never gotten into your BIOS on your PC, you'll have, you'll have to search around for that. Again, I've got some links for there to read. Uh, but you have to search for like your CPU settings, usually the processor settings, and look for something like if you have an actual Intel terminal pipe, it calls it like DT dash app, so it might be just called virtualization. And if you have an AMD CPU, it'll be like AMD dash B or something like that. Make sure that's available. Um, and the other thing is you do need to uh, check uh, check that you've got this Hyper-V disabled. So not all Windows uh, operating systems actually have this Hyper-V setting. Uh, so let me show you how I check that real quickly. So if you don't see it, you probably don't have to worry about it. But I, I always just open up the Windows features. So again, kind of searching is, is your friend, you know, Windows version. Again, this is, this is Windows specific. So you can do this if you're a Mac person. But if you just search, search for like features, you should find, be able to find the turning the Windows features on and off. Uh, and then uh, you just have to find this Hyper-V. Uh, 
hyperbeats at form. And just to make sure that the hyperbeats hypervisor is not enabled. So if you don't see that, you're probably okay. I think most people that don't see that don't have a problem. But if you don't see it, just uncheck that so the charge checks. So you can usually make the other things as well. However, they're configured. Just make sure that one's unchecked. All right. Um, any questions? So, like, I'm trying to go through this more quickly. Uh, if you don't to ask me specific questions, uh, like I said, there's one issue I'm working on with some people on Windows systems, right? You know, that I'm aware of. And again, vagrant uh, again, you should be able to do that which or where. Uh, there on to, uh, to check that we got the bigger instrument to be done for the command line. So, so that would definitely should be on your path uh, if you shovel. Uh, one thing for people that were having problems uh, with Vagrant, uh, um, I suspect it might be that the most recent version of Vagrant might have an issue. So you should ask some people, the, the ones that were having issues, the suits were having issues, to send me what version of Vagrant um, they have downloaded. I think, again, this was a problem that they're having on the Windows systems. So. All right, and then once you have that, then, then you're ready to go ahead and actually try and get your development box set up, okay? So, um, if you do this clone, so you should have to copy and paste this, so, so I'll show you how that here. So what I suggest you do, uh, I've already got this directory created, but when you open up the terminal, you'll be in your home directory, which will be on C colon users, vagrant, right? So, you know, I, I found recently that a lot of students don't kind of know about browsing their file system. Um, so that's so something you have to look up and learn, but, you know, so I, mean, I can browse my file system from my file browser and then go to C colon uh, users, uh, and I'm, I'm logged in as a user called Vagrant right now, so that's my actual home directory. And I've actually got my, my directory called repos already. I'm just copying it so I can safely delete this here. So, so I can create files, and you know, delete them from my file browser. But you can do the same thing for the terminal. So, um, so I, I can do like a directory command to list all the same files. So this is just a different view of the same files at this location on C users favorite here. And you might not see all exactly the same files. Some of these files might be hidden from you and things like that, but you should get posted the same files here. Um, I can create directories like the create directory command, which is what I, I showed my uh, uh, instructions for getting started here. So I can, I suggested that you create a subject called repos to put all your repos in. So after you do that, notice it created the repos directory here when you see calling users and I do it when you see the And then you have to change your directory to be that has to be your current directory before you do this next thing. So if you're in repos, then you can do the clone and it will clone uh, the class dev box repository into our repos. What I call repository directory. Okay. So then I'm going to copy that to C. This shouldn't be, you know, this, this step should work fine, hopefully. I mean, if you've got to install, most people don't have a problem to do it completely cloning the repository. The result of that is uh, uh, there's actually going to be a directory called CLSN36.netbox in your repos directory, and that has all the files for setting up your your, your, your virtual box um, for the class, right? And then to do the next step, I'm not going to show you this because I'm actually running a virtual machine here, so I can't do it correctly here. But for the next step, you can even change into the, what I call your repository directory, your, your net box, your 2336 net box repository directory, and then you do the vagrant copy. 
right? So the, the first time you do the Vader Cup, it's going to install a bunch of stuff for you. Um, so I described that a little bit. Um, and it shouldn't take too long, but you take 30 minutes or so. If you have a fast connection, it might be even faster than that. So it has to actually download a, uh, I guess known as a base box. So we're actually installing a virtual Linux machine. So we're going to Linux machine. But then it installs VS Code uh, and some other stuff, configures your development products for you for the class here. So the last thing you should see if it runs correctly is that um, um, it's successfully installed, all right? Um, so I question, first question here. Um, Yeah, so um, I'm going to try and transition over to talking about the assignment zero zero, the practice assignment. So, so yeah, uh, you do need the like a GitHub account set up, uh, and uh, yeah, we'll try and show you setting up the uh, the, the Git inside of the dev box here. So, so let's get to that. So that is, that is kind of our next objective. So the question was about setting up and some of the other things in your in your class dev box. So. Um, all right, so when I do a vagrant up, uh, so here actually, uh, you should see these things, but before you see this, you'll see a bunch of installation stuff the first time you do it. But then after that, actually before it starts installing, you should see those messages, so you might have to scroll all the way back up to the beginning before it starts installing stuff. Right, so it's already sent today. Sometimes to look out for are uh, the port is forward and you have the, the shared forward mounted. Uh, if you're doing uh, some people are doing the error message when it tries to mount the shared folders, um, that it can't do that. I'm, I'm, trying to get, I'm trying to figure out that issue yet, so we're still working on that. Um, yeah, if you don't successfully mount the shared folders, I think it has some problems actually installing your dev box. So, so we do have to resolve that yet. The other way to check, I mean, if this is money, you can bring up a, um, a browser and then navigate to that URL. So you have to go to your local HTTP uh, colon. Uh, some, some people might not have local hosts defined. Some let's say it just always use 127.0.0.1. And then colon 8080 is the port number. Right. So if, if your Visual Studio Code server is running correctly, and of that, you should see Visual Studio Code running. Okay. Um, and one final thing here before I get into actually using it. Uh, when you're done using your dev box, you should go back to your terminal. Uh, so never ever use the, the um, never use the Oracle uh, manager to stop and start your dev box. So never go to the, the Oracle family and do like a, a shutdown. Uh, because this box is being managed by Vagrant, um, and, that, and some bad things can happen if you try and manage it from um, um, from, from the virtual box family, right? So, so you always uh, manage it, it from your command line. So, so to, to safely shut it down when you're done working for the night, um, just commit and push your changes to my repository. Open up your terminal on the host machine and do a Vagrant. Shapes. And that will actually shut down safely in the, the machine, the virtual machine. And when it's shut down, you should no longer add it to uh, go to that URL. So it's, if it's not running, you, know, you get a message that. Uh, that the uh, site can't be reached. Okay, so if you get that when you try and get a Visual Studio Code server running into that box, something is not right yet. It's, it's not running or the port isn't correctly open or something like that. Okay. So you can always start it back up again when the paper up. So, but the second time you do a paper up, it doesn't have to reinstall everything. It'll just boot the machine up directly. So it should be relatively quick after the first time you get everything installed. Then you want to see these things. So you want to see the port 8080 forward. Um, 
mostly don't want to see any error messages. We also don't want to see that the shared folders. Uh, uh, you should see that the text editions, uh, or at least it shouldn't be an error that it couldn't find the text editions, hopefully. Uh, and then the shared folders being mounted to it. And then if it's running, uh, yeah, already reloaded it, but yeah, you should get it up in your browser then. It's just a UFO. You should always be able to just reload the app uh, if you need to, the Visual Studio Code service. All right, so let's, um, any, any quick questions about that? So, so that's kind of the end of the debt box setup. And I want to try and kind of look at. Uh, the practice assignment zero zero and, and doing stuff here. Okay, so again, uh, this stuff is all in the uh, uh, um, so we're coming on now to the uh, assignment zero zero, the example assignment. Uh, um, I think I had a video somewhere uh, about doing the assignment zero zero. What was it? Oh, I had it here. Um, there are a bunch of additional resources. Maybe it's, um, maybe it's only in the... Um, um, if you go to the additional resources for the class, I've got a bunch of stuff. I'll add more things on here, maybe. Uh, but in particular, I've got a link to the uh, the, the video uh, by my lectures for this class right here. Uh, and our recorded, these recorded help sessions, I'll also create a separate playlist. Uh, once I, once I uh, get this uh, video that, uh, so you'll be able to go here to find uh, next sessions. Um, Right, yeah, there should be a video. Um, so these videos here about the example assignment, and that's, that's the assignment zero zero. Okay, and this is stuff I'm going to go here, but you can also look at these videos uh, for a, a bit more. Um, Okay. Yeah, so uh, some people have been having problems with the, with the additions. And this is the, 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 the command that I sent. Um, um, so I don't know if people are watching this video after the fact that people say this, but um, uh, email me. So some people are finally reporting to me that doing the paper plug in, install the paper DB guest, I help them. So so that might be the resolution to the people having the problems mounting the, um, the shared forwarders, hopefully. All right. Um, so let's go through these steps here. So um, to start, you have, you have to have a GitHub account, okay? So, so you can start. Um, You can start by, um, for all these assignments, you can start by clicking on the, the link for the GitHub uh, invitation um, in um, our ILM um, online classroom. So, so if you click on that or right click on that, put it up in your tab here. Uh, well, actually, uh, I want to join a different oh, like the. Uh, uh, second, I think I forgot to do something here. Um, Bear with me for a second. I need to add my example student here into the classroom so I can show you something. Here. So let me know if you don't find your name on here, uh, but, but do make certain that you find that you correctly get your correct name. Uh, and I'm going to ask people, yeah, um, 
if you for the duration of this class, it looks like most students are doing this on one thing in a way, information people don't want to give away, but but within GitHub, have your, your actual name on here instead of you know you can, you can actually put whatever name you want in GitHub, but have your actual name that'll make it easier for me to, to match up things with the back book and stuff. But of course you can have whatever GitHub account ID you want, but um um, at least one for this class, uh, new name as it appears in the, um, in the class for a book, um, and, uh, anyway, so let me, let me, uh, so we need to start by accepting the, these assignments, so let me copy that, let me do it over here, um, so when you do that, when you go to one of these invitation links, uh, it'll the first time it'll ask you to select, you know, your um, uh, your name here. So I'm running as QMUC student. And then it'll ask you to, to either create a team or join an existing team. So I should probably make an announcement about that. Uh, but so I will allow team projects this semester. Uh, but um, I had a little bit of problems the first time I did this with people trying to join that team. So for the most part, I'm going to try and insist that you stay on a team once you form it. So you might want to try and do a little bit of thought into that. Um, and and, and uh, I will allow, you know, you, you can do the assignments individually, so you have a team of one. I will allow at most two or three students on a team. So no more than, than three students. All right. There are some requirements for teams, uh, which I'll have to go into more detail later. But basically, Everybody that's on a team has to contribute uh, roughly equal amounts of commits for the assignments into GitHub. Okay, so I'm going to know whether everybody on the team is roughly um, participating and coding and things by by using your, your commits and stuff. So, so you want to if you want to work with one or two other students, that's fine, but you want to put a little bit of uh, uh, thought into that again. Okay. So I'm going to create like a new team here. Um, and now we're going to end this assignment. So what this does is it actually creates. Um, Uh, a, um, uh, a repository for you. So, you know, if you log into your GitHub account and you look at your repositories, um, you should see now the assignment that you just done. Um, Maybe you just uh, accept it there. So, um, and yeah, it'll give it a name of like assignment. Then our team name at the end here. All right. So you'll need to be able to find this um, in order to clone it um, in your repository here. Okay. All right. So that, that's that's kind of first step here. Uh, you need to accept the assignment, get your team going. Um, Okay, so, so the next step then is that you need to actually clone the repository locally, but this needs to be done to your dev box, all right? So, um, so it's not in that out here. So the, the way, I mean, there, there's multiple ways you can do that. You know, you can do um, like a file, um, I actually have to go like from Git, I believe. So if you like a Git clone, um, so you can go over here to the source control and do the clone repository. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So 
Now, what you want to do is absorb the, uh, you need, uh, the full SSH URL here, okay? So, uh, um, so, so you need to find your repository and GitHub that was cool for you after you accept the assignment. Uh, and you need to go to here to find the URL to clone um, under code. Right. Don't clone the HTTPS because in order to be able to actually push changes to your repository, you have to clone uh, the SSH here. So, um, um, although uh, I might be skipping a step here, so there's there's some other things that we might need to do. So, so these are also described. Uh, and here in the assignment zero zero, so everybody really does want to do the assignment zero zero um, before you get working on assignment zero one. There's some things that it does. So it's actually before you come to the repository, we should probably complete these things that I talked about here first. So. Um, So, so, you, so you should have your dev box up and running. Um, so that's everything that we did. Uh, and you didn't have, have account created. Okay. So now uh, we do need to add in um, the not just successfully clone using an SSH uh, URL. We, we have to put our secure shell uh, public private key set up. So there'll be a key created for you in your dev box that you need to copy to GitHub. All right. So uh, the, the, the key will be here. So so um, there's multiple ways to open that up. So you can just find like a, a file, like open file, for example, inside of your dev box. Uh, you need to go find uh, SSH uh, and then find the, the public key here, the public ED25519 secure shell key. Right. And that's just a big long string. This is kind of like a password. Uh, so normally you should kind of give this out to people. See, um, but I'm just going to select that and copy it. So like Control C to copy or or right click copy. Right. And then what you need to do is you need to add that key into your GitHub account. So. Um, New, the new tab here. Let's make it out again. So the easiest way to do that, I think you go over to what is it? Um, settings, yeah. Probably uh, security. No. Uh, okay, so down in settings, look for the SSH and check the tape keys. Uh, I got some code keys there from the old dev box that I had. Actually, let me go ahead and those up there. So, so you, uh, if it's the first time you've ever done this, you probably won't have anything in here already. So you just want to add in a new SSH key, right? You should give it a good name. Uh, so once you start working on GitHub, uh, you'll probably collect quite a few secure shell keys. So it's good to know uh, each one is for. So this is my... So my my VS Code box key on my lap here. And you just need to get that key so you can get it pasted in here. So if you have that in there, then you should be able to, to, to clone the repository as I kind of started doing here. Uh, so that should be the next step. Uh, sorry, uh, I have to push tabs over here. So, um, so I'm just signing to zero. So we're done. Uh, the first step, that I'm not saying we done the, the, the second step, Craig, we have the, I just did the third step. We got our secure shell key to get out. Um, um, oh, yes, yeah. so there is, um, uh, we need to get some code extension installed as well, so uh, let's go ahead and do that. So, um, this video code is on kind of one of these modern browsers that uh, has um, uh, what you call extension, so it's an extendable uh, developed environment uh, that allows you to uh, install extensions. So the extension uh, is this down here. 
along the side. In this one, though, uh, I downloaded the extension for you already. Um, so it's a we have to install for the PSI app file. We need to install the CPS and PowerSense. The procedure is kind of bit of a bug. Uh, if you install it from here, it doesn't install the correct one, the Linux version for some reason. So I think that's a bug in VS Code. I'm not certain. Uh, so so, so we should, there should be a file already for you. So if you click on these three dots, uh, and uh, install from a VSIX file, um, and you should find it on your home directory called CPP Tools Linux. That is I so this is the, the CPP Tools for Linux specifically here. And it's a right time, you should install it. Um, and to be safe, you probably want to reload your. Um, I'm reading to the picture of your code, so it's a reload for you. Yeah, it's still, it's still, it's still installed here, so, so you might want to wait until it says it's installed completely. Um, yeah, I think this is another problem um, that I'm afraid. Uh, so we might, we might have, I might have to, to actually download this and install it by hand, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, if you get this message, uh, uh, the, the, the problem that we run into, I, I believe, is that there's a new version of this extension. And so it notes when you install it by hand, it notes that there's a newer version. So it, down, it goes off and downloads, but again, it, it downloads the wrong one. So um, I'm gonna have to put some instructions about this. Um, So yeah, there's there's now there's now a version like one point six point zero. So in particular, so what I want to do is, is, is I'm going to show you how doing this by hand. Um, so I usually just kind of write things. So the one we need again is the CPP tools that's Linux. So, so the problem is is that it's and again, I think there's a bug in this code. It seems to be installing the wrong one for some reason. It's not installing the Linux version. So if you right click on that and, and copy the link address, and then we can get into our dev box and download it. Uh, but this, uh, I'm going to open up the terminal here. So if you go over here and open up the terminal. So this program was actually running on my virtual box. Um, uh, and I'm in my home directory. And in fact, if you go directly to this, you'll see that, that the, the CPP tools that I downloaded was there. But again, that's, this, this might be the wrong version. It probably is the wrong version. So what we want to do is actually download the most recent version by hand. So if you do it, how do you get paste in? Um, so you might have to allow it to paste that in. So paste in that that URL that will download it. Um, but in fact, it probably it'll, it'll give it the same name, so it'll probably overwrite that CPP tools dash Linux. Uh, oh, then so I actually saved it with the one extension, which is probably what I didn't want. Let me go ahead and remove both of those. So let me remove that one and the one with dot one, and let me try that again. So, so yeah, before you download it, you might want to remove the one that's in there and then do the, the W get to download it. Um, and then, yeah, try it again. So then we we'll want it to try it all that. So, so it looks like we want to get version 1.6. So let's let's uninstall the 1.51. And let's try again to install the one I just downloaded. Okay. 
So, yeah, you know, we have some changes there for some reason. Um, let me try that one more time. We're going to have to work on this. Um, Okay, um, let's put a pin in that. Um, so I've got to, to try five procedures for there. Uh, it should normally work unless you're by, uh, we should be getting a bad one when I download it. Um, Now, I think one that we had was 1.5.1, but it keeps trying to. I think that's the one that we had. I think when we install this one, it seems to reinstall. It tries to upgrade to a version. This is 1.5 by 1. It's much smaller. It's like 23 megabytes for some reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got 1.6. I'm in Roger that one too. I don't know why. Maybe that works. So, so maybe the recommendation should be cut down to the one point five point one. Okay, so I'll post the instructions about this as well. Um, hopefully, they got it. So, so, so maybe people that watch this video after that try the one point five point one. So the most recent one was yeah, it doesn't seem like it's. it's Kind of download the more recent versions, maybe that's a good thing to use. Um, all right, so let's move on. Um, yeah, we have to, I've only got about 15 more minutes. So, so if you get that far, uh, yeah, so, so now we can try what I started with real quick and, and clone our repository. Um, so let's, let's show that. So again, this, uh, we want to go to your repository, uh, make sure that you clone the uh, SSH URL key here, so I'll copy that again. And, um, and then get clone, make sure that just paste that in there, that, that URL, um, and clone from it. Uh, now you need to select the location to clone it into, so you should always clone this into the sync uh, assignment subdirectory. So this will click, uh, this will clone locally into your dev box to this location, sync assignment. Okay, that's not this the name assignment zero zero TMDC student. All right, so, so select that and say okay. Uh, and then you can open it up. All right. So what you'll see is, is that so now I, I've got my you know so if, if you don't have your secure shell key set up you know you'll have problems you get a message about 
uh, you don't have permissions to clone that or something like that. So if everything works correctly, you should be able to, to, to clone it. So now you'll find, so, so uh, if, you, if you need to, you can always close and reopen uh, one of those projects. Oops. So let me go ahead and like, close that uh, folder. Um, so now that I've got it, I've, I've got it um, cloned, uh, I can reopen that folder now, just directly. I only have to clone it once. So we can do, you know, open folder or do a file uh, open folder. Uh, you have to navigate to this. So I need to go up one directory from there. So it's in the home data, sync, assignments, or if I cloned it, and then assignment zero zero. zero. So then, this is what you should see. So, so for all these assignments, you'll have you know, um, some, some files, some source code files in the include directory, in the source directory, and a few other things, a make file. Uh, right? So, um, So after you clone, for every assignment, so these steps after, so the, the, the steps that I went through here, you only have to do this once. So, so when you do this for assignment zero, zero, you only have to set up your secure shell key and get the, the VS code extensions working. Once you find that out, you'll be set up for all of the assignments your deadlines. These steps after this, then you do for every assignment. So for every assignment, you start by uh, cloning the, the, the assignment repository to your local dev box. Um, and then we have to do these configuration steps. So these configuration steps, again, have to be done from a command line. So this has to be done from inside your dev box or command line on your dev box. So to do this, um, if you want to do, if you have assignment zero zero open, if you go to uh, terminal, terminal, it opens up the terminal, but my, my current directory is an assignment zero zero, which is what you want, right? So now from here, I can do those steps. So I can do the back configure. So this can, you have to always configure these projects. It sets up. Um, some links, uh, compiles a few things that need to be compiled. Um, so you shouldn't be any errors on this. There's only for error, but yeah, I should send it. It can buy some things, link some things. Uh, again, you need to do that only once, but at the very time, right after you clone the assignment, you want to configure it. You want to, uh, you can, so we've got all these assignments, uh, all these program assignments have a grant system based on make. We can talk about more in more detail sometime in this class. Uh, you can try this out for the command line. So, so you should always be able to, to build everything by doing a make or a make call. These are equivalent. The, the default task. For, for that in, uh, is, is to make everything, right? So if you don't specify a target, uh, they make everything. So uh, if you have a list of all the targets you have at make help, this will tell you the other kinds of targets that you can have besides like make all, um, make test, make submit, make clean, and so on. So, but, but yeah, we want to test, make sure that everything builds cleanly. Make sure everything builds cleanly, so you shouldn't see any compilation errors or things. So it should end up running um, a debug executable and, and a test executable. Uh, and then as a final thing, you want to try and see whether the, the uh, unit tests are working are actually running. They might not all be passing, but they should be able to run. So you should be able to do a big test. So in this case, for the practice design, there's actually no test they're running yet. And, but, but, but they should, um, but, but the big test target should actually do something uh, and try and run some tests. Um, all right, and then uh, if you've got the uh, intelligence extension correctly set up, 
we should also be able to have the, the build um, and the, 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 the run. So I talk again a little bit about this, calling it a next step here. Um, um, but you should be able to uh, you know, there's some keyboard shortcuts, but they basically just invoke the same things that I just invoked my hand from the command line. So, for example, let us open up the uh, test files. Right. So, uh, we can do uh, like a uh, make So, if I want to do stand up everything so I can rebuild everything from scratch, I can do a make clean for the command line. But yeah, there should also be a, a keyboard shortcut, and this probably won't work unless we get the uh, the uh, C++ plus extension set up correctly, and, and it won't work until you've done the dot site the configuration step. But if you've got both of those successfully going, um, you should be able to add a control shift one, or this is a control B. And um, it will uh, try and do a big clean here. So, yeah, if, if those are working for you, that uh, not all the configuration is set up right. So, it seems like for me it's not quite working yet. So, some things we'll have to check here about that. Yeah, that is working. So, I, I just wasn't waiting long enough, maybe. So, um, so yeah, if you do the shift one and everything is set up correctly, you should see that the um, uh, control shift one keyboard shortcut is bound to make clean. So then that will clean up your project. And then if you have control shift two, um, that should run the make, the make all for you again. And then if you have problems with the keyboard shortcuts, you should always be able to go to um, a, uh, a terminal and do these by hand if you need to. All right. And then control shift three or control pound and shut run the test for you. All right. So kind of your goal is to get that far. Once you get that far, now you're actually ready to begin working on the assignments. Okay. So once you can actually compile and run the tests, uh, then you can actually begin adding in the code uh, and adding these things for, uh, for the assignment. Okay. So I, I covered these in the video and I'm getting kind of close to the end uh, of what I have to do today. But uh, uh, oh, uh, 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 there's a few more configuration that I forgot about. So, so we could sure to configure our username and uh, um, email. Uh, again, these steps only have to be done once. Um, so this should configure it for that for you. Uh, uh, and then we only have this for the first assignment that you do this, and then so we can fit it. This will be set up for all the rest of the assignments you get for this class. So, um, so this can just be a regular name, but this should be the email address that you use for GitHub. So, so you should just use your uh, full name um, to configure the username here. Uh, again, you'll have to do this from a terminal. Um, but it is important that uh, that you that your email that you configure how to match the email that you use on GitHub. So, in particular. Um, since I'm using this throwaway GitHub account for teaching students, I can't remember what my email is. So you can check that in your GitHub account. I think some of your profile, maybe. What's that? Emails? Emails, maybe. Oh, uh, yeah, there it is. So it should, should match your emails that you've got set up on your account. So.
So we got this from my team, he's some student ladies and listening to them here. You should be able to list those out by like, get config dash list. So, so it should find that uh, you know, you've got your own name and email set up now. Uh, for get. So the answer for you whenever you do a get commit or a get push, uh, 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 associate that with your um, with your commit when you're pushing those to the repository. So, All right, so we already ran through these. So, so we did the, the make clean or control shift one and the make build, control shift two. So you should always make sure you've done all these before you get into uh, the assignment. Okay. Um, for all of the assignments, there's going to be usually five or six tasks. Um, so like the, the first task here is we need to implement this prime function. I'm kind of just hurrying through this here. So um, just for the last few minutes here, let me show you that. So um, for all of the assignments that we're working on, these are all these assignments um, that you've never done um, uh, a project that, that's a multi-file uh, project. Uh, our assignments are split up into multiple files uh, and by convention, we have to put all the declarations for things in the header file. So, so there's usually a lot of more header files. That's where you have to declare things, like declare the, the functions that you're implementing. So in this case, um, the first task is we're going to be implementing a function called um, this, uh, um, uh, I can test, I, I can check these out for the, the, the test. So one thing you can always start by, usually there'll be tests uh, in the unit test here, but they'll be commented out, some of them will be commented out. So you'll start usually by uncommenting the first set of unit tests. So in this case, for the first task, we're trying to implement a function called is prime that should be returning that, that takes an integer as a parameter and returns a value result of true. So, so we, we expect if, if it's a prime number, it should return true. So one, two, and three are all prime. So it should be returned but four is not a prime number because four can be divided by ten. So, so any number can be divided by something besides one in itself that's not a prime number, right? So if you ask if, if four is prime, it should be returning false. So that's what the last prime function is supposed to do. Uh, so Okay. Now for C, we can separate the declaration of a function or a memory function from its actual implementations. You have to put the declaration in the header file. Header files are just for declaring the interface uh, or declaring the signature of your functions. Right? So put that in there and we'll save that. And then you have to put the actual implementation into the corresponding CPP file, okay? Um, so if you look in there, uh, I've already got what is known as documentation for your functions here, um, but we don't have the actual implementation. So you should put the implementation for is prime in the correct location. So is prime takes a, um, a value, uh, which is an integer, as input, and it returns a Boolean result. Okay? I'm not going to implement this prime, I'm just going to stub out the function, so I'm just going to always return true. Right? So if you do this, I have described this in the assignments here, so if you do return true, this should be enough now. You always want to get your assignment to a point where I can compile and you can run these tests. And then you can actually go in and try and implement this stuff, all right? So, so that should be enough. Um, um, if I if I rebuild, so I, I'm going to go ahead and do a clean again. So I control shift one to clean, uh, and then control shift two uh, to do a big wall. I think, I think you have to have focus inside of the uh, the, the uh, editor to do these keyboard shortcuts. So if your focus is somewhere else, maybe that was what I was doing wrong before. So if you have your focus here, control shift two should do the make all. But now I add some code uh, and I've uncommented the test here. So now when I'm doing control shift three or do the make tests, um, 
uh, it should run the tests, but but now not, you know not all the tests are, are passing. But that's to be expected because I I'm just returning. I stopped it out, so I'm always returning true, right? So uh, so so it, it passed the test on line 35, 36, and 37 because it was expecting true and returning true. But when we got to the test on line 40 here. We return true, um, but um, it was expecting false because four is not fine, right? So your actual task one is to actually manipulate, but you want to get to that point. You want to get to the point where um, you can actually run the test before you start implementing. So you probably always want to implement a stop function first to make sure that everything policy runs and runs the tests. Um, and then we can begin implementing, right? So uh, in my videos, I show the uh, complete implementation of this. So you, know, you can't just go, you can't just do something simple because uh, like, um, You know, you can't just find code just because there's an infinite number of integers, right? So, I mean, you could, in theory, you could do this to get all of the tests to pass, but your code still wouldn't be correct. So I can add, I can always add a test. Um, that you have to cover in your explicit um, But, but you know, so yeah, but just as an example, if I do that, I should be able to now cast the test for number four because uh, if it's not one, two, or three, it's going to return true. I mean, I'm still just failing a bunch of other stuff, right? So, you don't always have to do a big clean. Um, I mean, you should only have to do a big clean if, um, if you're having some problems. You want to make certain that you force everything to recompile. Um, I sometimes my habit to make clean because the compile is pretty quick, so it doesn't really make much of a difference. I just clean everything and make it. So anyway, uh, just as an example, um, oh yes, so so it's failing now for 35. Um, I'm expecting now, so anyway, my, my code must not be quite doing what I was thinking. So. Um, Well, these are sort of true, yeah. So one, two, and three are our are and now we're going to start out again. It's four, it's not. Shouldn't, shouldn't, if it's still compiling, don't, don't try and run your test before you get the, the message that the terminal is going to be used or else in the middle of cause a problem. So if I'm too quick on the draw, so if I do compile, I do a try to test while it's compiling, um, you can get problems or issues doing that. So, so be a little bit patient. Um, so always make sure it's done compiling everything before you do on to running your tests. Okay, well, that's what you expected. So, so now I'm passing down to five, but um, um, five is a kind of number, so it should be returning true for five. All right. All right. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm going to have to, to, to uh, get a new class to run to myself. Um, so, there's a couple of issues that we're still working on, but, but everybody should try and strive to get to this point where you can work on the assignment zero, 00 like I was doing here and actually maybe complete it off of practice. Uh, so, I can actually show a uh, committee. Um, so, quickly, uh, if I want to commit these changes, uh, I can go to the uh, source control. Uh, I can like, uh, add all of my changes. So now these changes are all staged, so, um, and then I can um, add a message to actually make a commit. This will make it to a local. Oops. Um, so 
So just as an example, um, there's a commit message. Commit message should always have a title followed by a blank space and followed by a longer description for the commit messengers. There's not a very long description, so it should be a little bit more descriptive. And then, um, so this will actually make a really commit, but this commit is only local once I commit it. So now at this point, locally I've got one, so down here I've got one commit locally that's different from my, my remote repository. So on my remote repository, um, if you go back and look at um, uh, here, um, Get your, of course, the commits. Uh, there are a few commits that when it creates the repository for you, it does, but, but uh, until you make your own commit, uh, you won't see things for these classroom initial commits for you. Uh, so I need a commit, but until you push your commit, I won't see that. Um, uh, so I won't see your work until you actually push it. To your GitHub classroom. So to push it, you can, you can get down here at the scratch that um, push the, um, the, the commit there. Um, and let it periodically fetch for you if you want to. It's actually kind of more important if you're working on a but uh, I'll have to talk about that later. But yeah, once you push your commit, you can go to your GitHub repository and look at your commits. You should see it on there now. Right? And also, another thing that I'll have to talk about later, you should see it uh, in your feedback requests. Um, so all commits that you make uh, will be gathered into this feedback for request. All right, so I'm back home, um, so sorry about that. Um, uh, we'll talk more about this uh, on Facebook. If you have questions, you know me. Uh, I'll post the chat use email as well. Uh, here's a resource you can go to ask, ask you to help to get set up with your questions or as you work on assignments. Uh, all right, yeah, so sorry to run, but yeah, I'm going to have to go ahead and, and stop, the, um, uh, stop the thing there for now. I'll see you guys later then, all right?